Welcome to Provincial Resource Library's Newfoundland and Labrador History Picture Show. My name is Bonnie Morgan. I'm the Newfoundland and Labrador Collections Librarian with Newfoundland and Labrador Public Libraries. And this video is another in our series featuring images from the historical Newfoundland and Labrador Photograph Collection, which is housed at the A.C. Hunter Public Library in St. John's. Today's slideshow features images from the Bickerdike Collection. So Rhoda Dawson Bickerdike is a recognized British artist and she spent some time in Newfoundland during the 1930s working for the Grenfell Mission. The pictures that I'm going to share with you today were taken while she was in St. John's between March and May 1936. And she wrote a essay about this experience, uh, The Wharves of St. John's. And in it, she describes how she went down to the harbor and she really only intended to make studies and do sketches and of the masts and the schooners. But when she got there, she became really fascinated with the work that was happening on the wharves. And the pictures that I have selected to share with you today, I think reflects that, how interested she became in the work that was happening on the wharves at that time. So this slideshow, I've called it a fishing port, St. John's Harbor in spring 1936. So here's an image of the north and south side of the harbor you can see looking east towards the Narrows. Uh, you can see Signal Hill there in the background and it gives a really nice sense of the overall feeling of the harbor at that time as a working fishing port. So here's a closer view of the north side, and you can see the finger piers, which was the way that the harbor was laid out up until after the Second World War. You can't help but be impressed by the number of masts and sails that you can see. And one thing Bickerdike commented on in her essay was that sail survives here, meaning Newfoundland, more than anywhere else in the world. So you can see her interest in the masts and the sails. And her next picture, so in this next picture, you can see a schooner with the sail unfurled. And this was taken at the Bowering Brothers Wharf. And you can really get a sense of the complexity of the rigging and how heavy that canvas sail looks. And you can see two uh, fellows there uh, working on the dock. Here's another image of uh, some people working on the deck of a schooner. So it's some fishermen. And in the background, you can see a steamer, uh, which is a nice contrast between the kind of future of the harbor, the larger vessels and the smaller vessels, who would, which would be there, the schooner. And the amount of equipment on the deck is really impressive. You see the ropes, the anchor chain, there's a punt there you can see, and you can see a barrel at the base of the mast there right by the hatch. So a lot of equipment on the deck of that little schooner along with the uh, people who are working there. Here's another image taken on, taken on the north side. And here you can see on the right side a way scale. And you can see Water Street in the background. And this was taken out on one of the finger piers looking back towards the city. And Bickerdike had more expensive camera equipment, but she said when she went out, out on the wharves, she would take her little brownie or Kodak with her instead. So we've looked at the north side, and as we work our way around the harbor, this was taken at the dry dock. So it's a banking schooner, large wooden vessel. You can tell it's a banking schooner because of all the dories that are stacked there on the deck. So the bank fishery, the uh, fishermen would go out in these dories from the larger vessels, 
uh, two in a dory usually, the dory mates, and they would hand line for fish and then bring it into the larger schooner uh, at, the, at the end of the day. So here is uh, a large banking schooner at dry dock getting some repairs. So on the south side, here's an image of a much larger vessel, because larger vessels could uh, dock at the south side than on the north side with all the finger piers. And you can see people working here on the, on the deck, uh, see a person there dumping a wheelbarrow into the harbor, which maybe not such a good thing. And I want to mention again that Bickerdyke uh, is a recognized artist. You can see examples of her work if you go to the Victoria and Albert Museum or the British Museum in London. Uh, you can go on the website and search for her name and see some examples of her paintings. But here's one where you can clearly see the painter's gaze, where she's taking photographs that could potentially become paintings. The big industrial vessel, the little person there, lonely on the deck, the misty city in the background. So certainly you get a sense of a composition for a painting in this picture. Some of the work that was happening on the deck was coopering. So this is an image of the, on the south side, and it's some coopers with barrels. And barrel making was such an important skill trade in support of the fishery. And I'd like you to notice in the next series of pictures the, how pervasive barrels are. So if you look, you can see barrels in almost all the pictures, wooden, old-fashioned wooden barrels. So here's one of some anchors and chain. You can see the barrels all lined up there towards the top of the picture. See a little wooden hand barrow as well and a cart. Here's the same objects from a different angle. You can see the anchors and the chain and you get a real sense of how large these things are. And you can see also a vet there in the background that would have held uh, oil. And here's a raised view of that same scene with the, see the anchors once again, uh, the vats that would have held whale or seal oil possibly, uh, the barrels lined up, and you can see a person working down at the bottom of the picture with a wheelbarrow. I'm not sure if this is Bain Johnson's or Joe Brothers premises. Both of those companies had big premises on the south side that processed uh, seal products. I'm sure one of you watching this will know, and you can shoot me off an email if you like and let me know if it's Joe Brothers or Bain Johnson's. So here's a close-up of a person working on the, on the dock, and it's uh, someone shoveling seal flippers from the deck on into a wheelbarrow. And seal flippers were such a springtime treat. And it's no wonder that Bickerdyke took this picture because people in St. John's looked so forward to seal flippers. Uh, so you put them in a pie or into a roaster, make them into a stew. So the meat from the seal hunt was something that people really looked forward to. And here are some other products from the seal hunt. Uh, you can see some people on the Left-hand side sorting pelts, and on the right is an image of a pelt stretched on a frame to dry. Here's two schooners uh, that are tied up side by side. Bickerdyke commented in her essay about the clutter that she saw on the uh, the decks of the schooners that were in the harbor at that time. And here's an excellent example, because there's stuff and people, barrels you can see rolling everywhere. There's so much going on uh, in that picture. So here's barrels being used for another purpose, and that is for packing uh, dried salt cods. You can see some people there filling a barrel with a dried salt cod on one of the finger piers on the north side. See the south side hills there in the background. 
So cod would have been uh, dried on flakes and uh, Bicker Dyke took some pictures of the fish flakes that were at the battery and she found flake structures really interesting. Uh, you can tell with the next series of pictures that she was really fascinated by these structures. One thing to notice also in this picture, uh, in the lower right hand side, I'm sure that's some chickens. So there's some chickens there hanging out around the flakes at the battery. So here's a picture of a side view of the fish flakes. Uh, you can see how they're constructed from the side. And here she took a picture looking down towards the flakes. You can see the city in the background. And she also took a picture under the flakes. And here's another one of those painter's gaze uh, uh, photos that she took because it's such a dramatic graphic image of the structures of the posts looking out towards the harbor from underneath uh, a fl fish flake at the battery. Now we're back on the north side for this picture and again it's a gentleman who's posing for her. I expect again she wanted to make a painting. We've seen lots of images of uh, people in their working clothes but here you see uh, a man with his white shirt and his tie, his, his hat, his fedora, his pipe, there with the barrels in front of him and the rigging of a schooner behind him. And he's clearly so comfortable on the dock. Just look how close he's standing to the edge. So it's a very uh, dignified picture of a person uh, at the St. John's Harbor at that time. And speaking of comfortable on the dock, look at this image. This was taken on the south side, and it's the kind of thing that now strikes fear into the heart of every caregiver and parent. But here's this little child, clearly so comfortable. It's just sitting there, playing, enjoying the spring sunshine. And it really speaks to what a different time and place. So St. John's Harbor in the spring of 1936. So just a little bit about the Bickerdyke collection. Uh, it consists of 68 photographs, mainly of St. John's, that were acquired by the Provincial Resource Library from Raoul Bickerdyke in uh, 1988. So that was four years before her death. There are more Bickerdyke materials in Newfoundland. There at Memorial University, there are additional materials from her estate, including some paintings. As always, I like to offer you some recommended reading uh, if you are interested in this picture show. So Rhoda's essay, The Wars of St. John's, we have a typescript of that available at the Provincial Resource Library that you can read. Um, I didn't mention it, but when Bickerdyke was at the Grenfell Mission, she was primarily working in the design of silk stocking mats. So an interesting piece, if you're interested in that, is Paula Laverty's book, Silk Stocking Mats, Hooked Mats of the Grenfell Mission. Uh, the next two books are both diary memoirs uh, from people from women who worked at the Grenfell Mission. So one, Isabel Millen, Adventures of a Grenfell Teacher, and the other is Jesse Luther at the Grenfell Mission, both books that reflect women's experience of working at the mission just as Rhoda Bickerdyke did. And the last book is because there were so many images related to the seal hunt and the spring seal fishery is Shannon Ryan's last book, which is from Flanker Press, The Last of the Ice Hunters, an oral history of the Newfoundland seal hunt. If you wanna know more about the seal hunt, really Shannon's work is a state of the art and a good place to start to, to learn about the, the spring seal hunt in Newfoundland. So thank you for watching the latest in our Newfoundland and Labrador history picture shows and we look forward to making more and we uh, hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching.